the decades to come, it will remain the basics. Be nice to the people, but hard or merciless to the process. If there are no problems, you have the biggest problem. a very successful lean production company and you are also a early pioneer for industry 4.0. From your point of view, could you share how's the relationship between lean and the industry 4.0? How to leverage both of them as a secret sauce to grow the business sustainability? So for us, this is really two sides of the same coin. It's really about creating transparency, number one, to see the problem, to fix the problem, predict maybe yeah. when a problem will happen, and even prescribing some medicine so that you have the right countermeasure at hand before the problem happens. You know, and if I may even yes. give an example. So on the predictive maintenance side, in the lean toolbox, you may call it as TPM, total preventive or productive maintenance. In welding, you have electrodes, and these electrodes, they wear out over time. Yeah. And using some historic data from the past, we can train our algorithm and make our algorithm smart that they can very precisely predict when the electrode will be worn out. This is really where AI helps us very much in leveraging then productivity, overall equipment effectiveness and all the other major KPIs we see. This is eventually is still like a lean thinking, right? Three more with less. I'm very firm in my belief that lean is the basic and I'm sure in the decades to come it will remain the basics. It's Thank the best weapon to remove waste from the value stream, I'm sure. You actually have a very unique experience from academies to the corporate. Given recently Industry 4.0 change to address those complexity and the challenge environment, what kind of uh, top ideas come from your mind? Number one is really, and I really believe that, be nice to the people, but hard or merciless to the process. Because I think if you are a humble, modest and polite leader, yeah. and you create an environment where people like to work and are motivated, then they can perform at their very best level. On the other hand, if you are really digging into the facts, be hard to the process, challenge to the process, this really helps you to understand in detail the situation and derive the right measures. Therefore, be nice to people, tough to process. And then the other one, and this is a bit in line of thinking of Taichi Ono, the founder of the Toyota production system, develop an anger against waste. The purpose for this visit is uh, I want to uh, you share what's your ideas about uh, the best use case, right? Yeah. So you really appreciate and uh, what kind of uh, change, right? So compared to four years ago uh, in, this, in these factories? Yes, you know, I think in all three factories, Changsha, Wuxi, and here, we have good use cases. The thing is that the level of Industry 4.0 applications and the penetration, uh, how many we have and how dense we are, we are here really the most advanced, yeah? Oh, you know, okay, we, we are good. here in the SMT area, surface mounting technology, and you earlier saw already some um, optical inspections yeah. where we look at the PCB, identify failure patterns, and this is a very, very famous application. And nowadays, this is really 100% coverage. We call it AI at AOI, AOI. artificial intelligence yeah. at automatic optical inspection. In the other case, um, we were very much striving here. This is the level of simultaneous engineering work. You may have heard about knowledge graphs, knowledge ontologies, yeah. and we go here for really very complete digital models. Yeah. So um, uh, with knowledge graphs, we model entire production lines, mm. and we can support the development uh, and the ramp up um, uh, in a way that we use extensively simulation with these models and do some um, improvement work, some bug fixing yeah. already uh, virtually. And this enables us to have much quicker ramp ups. Do you actually also have some new Gen AI use case yes. uh, recently? Yes. yes. So Gen AI, also this shop floor here, 
is really one of the big use cases for generative AI. So, and I would like to give a couple of examples. I mean, in any shop floor, you have work instructions, quality assurance matrices, control plans, yeah, uh, uh, quality reporting sheets. And we use very intensively uh, generative AI models to, based on historic data, to create these documents. We are supporting here facilities in, for example, Europe, in India, in uh, Thailand, or in Mexico. And um, uh, thanks to Gen, Gen AI models, you have now a work instruction in Chinese or a quality document in Chinese. And um, uh, with one click, you can translate it in five languages. It's very high quality. Electrification and decarbonization is shaping the future mobility. Can you share a little bit about your strategy, particularly how the digital and the industry 4.0 help your sustainability journeys? We talk about climate action, for sure circular economy, so a very broad approach to sustainability. And this is this cradle to grave approach. Since 2020, we are CO2 neutral in the scope one, two. We work very much on the efficiency side and here big data AI helps us a lot. If you look at our roofs here in this company, for example, or the entrance gate, you see a lot of solar panels, yeah. you see some shades. We use, for example, geothermal energy systems. We are also purchasing electricity from green sources. We call it green electricity because this also counts into the sustainability targets. And as a last resort, we are offsetting the residual CO2 emissions. Yeah? And we are using also AI, for example, we did a profiling of all our machinery and we analyzed what is the usage profile and based on that we switch off the machinery on and off and using AI we even predict the future usage and try to negotiate contracts on energy consumption prediction and this helps us then to be very efficient on the energy usage side. Can you share a little bit more regarding how your company helping the employee on the cafe building? One thing is for sure, this change is happening towards the digitalization, the new world of artificial intelligence. We need to actively embrace the new era and equip yourself with at least some basic knowledge. So we set up a talent academy. Yeah. And the last years, we have developed more than 100 digital talents coming wow. from all different domains. We gave them a very deep education we should create an environment where people are really empowered. You know, there is another lean thinking statement. Decisions should be taken on the lowest possible level. And this is also speed, by the way, and motivation. And if people can really decide what they do, this is also very motivating. And the last one, I think, is really one of my favorites. I hope this is also pure lean thinking. It's um, how you deal with problems, yeah. problem welcome culture. Because one thing is, in my understanding, for sure, you will always have problems. The difference between an excellent company and a medium company is how they deal with the problems. If there are no problems, you have the biggest problems.